guys. Uh, this is going to be the last video to round out this unit. Um, we're going to look at something called dimensional analysis. Now, what dimensional analysis is, is it's just um, an alternate way to convert units. I actually find this um, a little easier. It's much more logical um, in the way that I set it up, and this is great because you can use it to convert any kind of units um, if you're following these rules. So basically what we do is we set it up kind of like we're multiplying fractions. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go over our definitions first. So dimensional analysis is the conversion from one unit system to another. This is particularly effective if you're going metric to English, um, that kind of thing as well. Um, dimensional analysis is something that you will uh, need back uh, it, for the future, uh, like when you go into chemistry and some of the sciences, um, you'll be using this a lot more as well. So this is a good uh, background for that so that it's not completely new to you. Um, a conversion factor, we have I think I've probably thrown that term around before, but that's just the unit ratio that we need to convert um, one unit to another. And then the exchange rate would be the conversion factor um, if we're talking about changing money. Okay, so um, if you travel across seas uh, to Europe, you get euros instead. There's what we call an exchange rate. It's not a one-to-one. One dollar one is not worth one euro. So you have to look at what the price is and get your um, exchange rate, which is a conversion factor, so then you can figure out how much your money is worth. All right. All right. So here's how we do dimensional analysis. We basically set it up like one long, giant, um, run-on uh fraction multiplication problem. But this is nice and easy because then you know where to put everything. Um, when we did it the other way and I told you to think smaller to bigger and then multiply or divide, well this way it sets it all out for you and you can clearly see where you need to multiply or divide. So you just want to set it up so that your units cancel out. So for example here, I want to convert 180 miles per hour. So if you think about what that's saying, it's saying 180 miles for one hour out. That's a unit rate. Uh, so that's what it's telling me. Then it's saying, I want to take this and I want to change it to feet per second. So what I want to wind up with is feet on top, seconds on the bottom. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to set this up in such a way that all of my units cancel. So what you'll notice is I started with the hours. I have hour on the bottom. Well, remember when we're multiplying fractions, tops and bottoms cancel. So if I want hour to cancel, I need to put it on the top. I know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. I didn't have to stop and think, should I multiply or divide it? I'm just going to set it up, then I'm going to go through and do my calculations. However, minutes isn't what I want. I want to get to seconds. So in order to make my minute unit cancel, I'm going to put minutes up here. And I know that one minute is 60 seconds. Now I'm left with seconds on the bottom, which is what I was looking for. I'm left with just seconds. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at miles. Well, I wanted to change miles into feet. Well, here my miles is on the top. So that means in order to cancel, I need my miles unit to be on the bottom. So I'm putting my miles down here. I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. Now I'm left with feet, which was what I was trying to get to. I was trying to get to feet and seconds. So once I've done that, now I can just go across. And um, we could reduce um, first if we wanted to. I just used my calculator um, for this one. So um, I multiply my tops. I multiply my bottoms. So I wind up with these gigantic numbers, but again, um, since I want this to be feet per second, that means per one second, so I want this to be a unit rate. So now that I've wound up with this number, basically all I'm doing is reducing it. I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by this 1,200 to get a unit rate. I wind up with 792 feet per one second, or if we wanted to abbreviate that, FPS feet per second. So we took miles per hour, we converted it to feet per second. Okay? We're just putting different measures in there, converting units. If you look here, here's an example um, of exchanging money for an exchange rate. So here I'm telling you $1 is worth 0.76 of a euro. So um, the euro is worth more than the dollar. One dollar will not buy you one whole euro. So how many euros would you get for $25? Now if we wanted to, we could set this up as a proportion as well, but since we're talking about dimensional analysis, we're going to set it up that way. So I want to wind up with euros. So I'm going to leave euros on top because I want to wind up with euros. I know that 0.76 euros is worth $1. I want my dollars to cancel. I have $25. I don't need to put that over anything. So just to make it a fraction, I put it over 1 generically because anything over 1 is uh, itself. So I just put the 1 down there with no labels because I don't need anything else to cancel. My dollars are canceled. I'll wind up with euros. So when I multiply this, I get 19 over 1, which is 19 euros. So $25 would become 19 euros. 
So we're going to do um, a few examples of this. Um, and this can be confusing sometimes to kids. Um, I find it a very logical way to set things up. Um, that's the way my brain works. Not everybody's works the same way. So you might find the other ways easier, but this is a, a good basis for some um, higher sciences that you might hit. So for example, these first three are, are very similar to things we've seen before when we were just converting units. So here I want to go from four yards to feet. So I'm starting with yards. Um, what I want to wind up with is feet. So just to make this a fraction, I'm going to write it over one. Now to cancel out yards, I need yards on the bottom. I want to wind up with feet on the top. I know that one yard is three feet. So here, yards cancel, yards cancel. I didn't have to stop and think, should I multiply, should I divide? I set this up and I can see that I should multiply. Four times three is 12. One times one is one, which is why I'm ignoring that. When I have ones on the bottom, I can basically ignore them because anything over one is itself. So four yards is 12 feet. And again, we could have done that using the um, earlier method that I, I told you where we looked at, um, are we going from large to small or small to, small to large, and then determine whether you should multiply or divide. However, this is dimensional analysis. Now, when it's just a one-step one like this, it's not too hard. But if you're converting something um, that isn't just a one-step, um, like we were doing in some of the earlier ones, that's a little trickier, and that's where dimensional analysis will really help you out. So here, I want to take 36 fluid ounces. I want to convert them to cups. So I'm just going to write that over one to make it a, uh, a fraction. And then I want my fluid ounces to cancel. So those are going to have to go on the bottom. My cups can go on the top. I know that there are eight fluid ounces in one cup, all right? So here I see um, I get 36 over eight. Uh, 36 divided by eight does not work out evenly. 4.5, I wind up with 4.5 cups, all right? Or four and a half cups. So here you'll notice, um, basically with these ones, they kind of go away. So I've got 36 on the top. I wind up with eight on the bottom. You want to see that, it's like this. 36 over eight, my fluid ounce is canceled, so I was just left with cups. So when I did that division, I got my answer. And again, you could have looked at it and said, I'm going from small to large, I need to divide. Just like over here, you could have said, I'm going to large to small, I need to multiply. But this is uh, a dimensional analysis, the way to the, the set it up that way. So here I've got 24 pints. Put that over one. I want to change it to gallons. Well, I know between gallons um, and pints, there are quarts. So I'm just going to go step by step because I can't, off the top of my head, think about how many pints are in a gallon. So I know that uh, to go from pints to quarts, one quart is two pints. That one I know. Uh, now I need to go from quarts to gallons. And I know that one gallon is worth four quarts. So see, here's where I had two steps because there was kind of an in-between step. So dimensional analysis can make it a little easier to see what I'm doing here. So here I wind up with 24 on the top. And let me show you. My pints and my pints cancel, my quarts and my quarts cancel. I like to cross it all out. I'm left with gallons on top, nothing on the bottom. That's exactly what I want it to look like. So I wind up with 24 over 8 or three gallons, okay? Again, it's very similar to things we've been doing. Now these ones here, you'll notice this is um, a little trickier because now we're kind of dealing with um, a ratio that we're changing up. So I want to find, um, I have 24 fluid ounces. I don't know why I crossed my L, sorry. Fluid ounces for $2.90. It says find the price per gallon. This means I want money on top, gallons on the bottom. So since I want to wind up that way, I'm going to put my money on the top already. Money on top, fluid ounces on the bottom. So this is what I have. This is the proportion I've been given. Uh, it's 290 for 64 fluid ounces. I want to take my fluid ounces and change them into gallons. I don't need to change the dollars, so I'm just going to ignore them. So in order to cancel out my fluid ounces, those need to go on top. I don't know how many fluid ounces are in a gallon. I do know how many are in a cup. Eight fluid ounces are in one cup. All right, fluid ounces have canceled. But now I've got money for cups. That's not what I was asking. So to get cups to cancel, cups is going to go on the top. I don't know how many cups are in a gallon. I do know how many cups are in a pint, though. So uh, one pint is two cups. My cups cancel. 
Now I'm left with money for pint. Again, still not what I'm looking for. So uh, I want pints to cancel, so I'm putting pints on the top. And again, pints, I'm not sure how many there are in a gallon. Pints to quarts, I know, though. There are two pints in one quart. My pints cancel. Now I've got money for quart. Still not what I'm looking for. I want to get rid of my quart. I'm going to do that by putting it over gallons. I know that one gallon is four quarts. My quarts cancel. So if you look, on the top, the only symbol I'm left with is my money. On the bottom, the only symbol I'm left with is my gallons, which is what I want. I want price per gallon. So what you'll notice is um, I'm actually going to have to reduce this when I'm done, but that's okay. So I'm going to um, use my handy dandy calculator because I'm not doing all that multiplication in my head. 290 times 8 times 2 times 2 times 4 gives me 371.2. I'm going to add the extra zero because we're dealing with money. And on the bottom, you'll notice I got a whole bunch of ones and a 64. So that's for 64 gallons. So look at this. Um, this is telling me how much it is for 64 gallons. That's not what I want to know. I want it as a unit rate, which means I need it to be over one gallon. So how am I going to reduce it? I'm going to divide both of those by 64, and I wind up with 580 per gallon. All right. So that's just um, another way to go about lining it up. Because um, most of you don't know off the top of your head how many fluid ounces are in a gallon. I don't. So I just used what I knew and I set it up step by step using dimensional analysis. And I know that I'm going to wind up with the right thing because all of my units have canceled out. Then I just took my answer, changed it into its unit rate. So it's $5.80 per one gallon, which is what I wanted to know. What is the price per gallon? All right, so here I'm telling you I can buy two tons for $840. Um, I want to find the price per pound. So look at this. I want to wind up with price per pound. So I want to wind up with price on top, pounds on the bottom. Since I want price on top, I'm going to start out putting it on top. Um, price per pound, I want my tons to cancel, so I'm going to put tons up here. I know how many pounds are in a ton. One ton is 2,000 pounds. My tons have now canceled. I've got money on the top. I've got pounds on the bottom. That's what I wanted to wind up with. However, if I do this, what you'll notice is I wind up with 840 over 4,000. I want to know the price per one pound. So I need to convert this into a unit rate, meaning I want it over one pound. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to take both of my numbers and divide them by 4,000. And when I do that, I find out that it's actually 21 cents per pound. And you'll notice I didn't write it as the fraction. I just wrote per pound because that means per one pound, okay? Um, and that's just the mechanics of how we can write it. So again, um, if you're confused, go back, rewatch the video. Um, rewatch any of the previous videos that you need to to help clarify as well. Uh, ask me any questions that you need to. You can post those in the comments. You can email me, you can ask in class, all right? Uh, you guys have a great night, and I will see you tomorrow.